And the other big story at the inauguration, the protests, many turning violent. I actually captured this video that you're going to see on my phone. Our news crew witnessed some of the looting, the broken windows, the destruction of property. Businesses were locking their doors. We tried to go outside and capture this, but we were ordered to stay inside these particular protesters. They also set vehicles on fire, and Matt Gutman joins us from D.C. right now. And Matt, you were covering the protesters all day, and we're hearing that more protests and marches are planned today. Hey, good morning, Paula. That's right. And the biggest protest of all is set to start right here. You can see them setting the sound stage behind me. Already hundreds of people out here for the Women's March on Washington. Hundreds of thousands of others expected. But with its A-list celebrities and peaceful message, it'll be a far different sight than those running street battles we saw over the past 12 hours. Overnight in Washington, D.C., protesters crashing one of the night's glamorous inaugural balls, pushing their way into the Freedom Ball, linking arms to try to prevent guests from coming in. Once pushed back, the protesters began tossing water on partygoers. Earlier, blocks from the pageantry of the inaugural parade, rioters smashing this limo, then setting it on fire. The smoke clogging the street, rioters then vandalizing this Starbucks and a McDonald's. Move Riot police moving in, a wall of them pushing protesters back, blasting them with pepper spray and stun grenades. Peaceful demonstrators scrambling for cover as bursts of rapid-fire rubber bullets rang out. Nearby, while being interviewed by another network, Are you like the hipster version of the neo -Nazi movement? white nationalist Richard Spencer sucker punched by a passing protester. More than 200 arrested in the nation's capital. At the University of Washington, a shooting at a protest left one hospitalized with possible life-threatening injuries. But as in Washington, the majority of the protests in California, New York, Chicago, Missouri, and other places were peaceful. He's our president! He's our president! He's Meanwhile, Trump supporters standing by the president. You know, when you're angry and you're yelling and you're screaming and you're destroying things, it takes away from your message. Later this morning, that massive women's march taking to the streets of Washington, D.C., with sister marches extending across the country. Over 600 of these marches in all, more than 2 million people expected to turn out. A plane full of women arriving in Baltimore, cheering after the flight attendant said this. A round of applause for all the nasty women on board. Local authorities say they expect up to 400,000 protesters, but organizers overnight told me they expect even more than that. But what they hope happens today is that this launches a national movement warning against the loss of women's rights in a Trump administration. Paula Dan. Matt Gutman, thank you. President Trump's message in his inaugural address was loud and clear. America first. Time magazine devoting much of its latest issue to the new president with this image on the cover. And joining us now to talk about all of this, Koki Roberts and Kristen Soltis Anderson. Uh, Koki, let me start with you. Let's talk about this women's march on Washington this morning. Do you imagine the, the message of the marchers is likely to have a real impact on President Trump? Well, it's, it's not entirely clear what the message is, and I think that's a problem. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of women, uh, hundreds of thousands of them, who want to say, uh, we're, we're disturbed, we're angry, we're unhappy. But uh, there's not a, a goal going forward. I mean, if they, if they said something like, let's elect 100 women by 2020, and then tomorrow morning wake up and go out and start working on that, that's one thing. This is a little more amorphous than that. And Kristen, you know, there were moments of outreach during the president's speech yesterday, but it was largely tough, uncompromising, a lot of populist undertones. Do you think he should have done more to unify? I think it's going to take more than words to unify. I think it's going to take action. His speech sounded in many ways uh, like a, a slightly more professionalized version of, <coughs> of a campaign rally speech, very populist in tone, focused on going after those elites in Washington. Um, I think he's going to have to make sure that when he in the future says he wants to be a president for all Americans, that he has actions, that those who, when they hear Donald Trump say all Americans, they don't really think they count in his definition of all. They're right. going to need to see action from him to feel like they're really a part of that. Koki, what about the Democrats? They're locked out of power largely in, in Washington right now. Um, what, is there any way that they can find to work constructively uh, with this new president? 
Well, I don't think they want to work constructively with the president. And um, yesterday, the symbolism of a boycott by many Democratic members of Congress uh, really underlines that. Uh, the Republicans, through the Obama administration, acted like a traditional party in opposition. And I think the Democrats are likely to act the same way with President Trump. Uh, the problem with that, of course, is that it means nothing gets done. And that uh, frustration about Washington and the Washington elites, quote unquote, uh, remains. And that then becomes Trump's problem. Koki and Kristen, thank you very much for your analysis on this thank historic you. morning.